You know what, Mickey? We need to make this channel more popular. We need more views, more likes. Okay, how about this? 10 lit swear words in Spanish. Okay, well, how about this idea? Tell your boss to go to hell in 50 different languages. What do you mean, no way? That would be the biggest video on the whole channel. No way. Oh wait, you mean Norway. Sure, let's do that. That'll be super popular. Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Like we just decided a moment ago, today's topic is the main language of Norway, Norwegian. A language that in many ways feels familiar to speakers of English and other Germanic languages like Dutch and German. As I said in my video on the North Germanic languages of the Nordic nations, Norwegian is a North Germanic language, along with Swedish and Danish, as well as Icelandic and Faroese. By around the 2nd century CE, Proto-Germanic, the earliest common ancestor of all Germanic languages, had begun to branch out into Western, Eastern, and Northern dialects. And by the 8th century CE, the Northern dialect had developed into Old Norse, spoken by the seafaring Viking tribes. Over the next 600 years or so, Old Norse developed into the various North Germanic languages of today. Norwegian today is spoken by around 5 million people, mainly in Norway. As I discuss at length in my video on the North Germanic languages, Norwegian is very similar to neighboring Swedish and Danish, and in writing they share a high degree of mutual intelligibility, but in speaking, well, it depends. Differences in pronunciation and an extensive dialect continuum that spans all three languages make intelligibility difficult in many cases. That dialect continuum exists within each of those three countries as well. Inside Norway, there are dialects that vary greatly from each other. In most countries with lots of dialectal variation, the standard language is a unifying force, a bridge between the various dialects. But in Norway, there are two officially recognized standard languages, Buk Mol, which means book language, and Ni Norsk, which means New Norwegian. During the centuries-long union between Denmark and Norway, the Norwegian elite spoke a form of Danish with their own Norwegian pronunciation and Danish was the written language of Norway. After the end of the Union in the 19th century, a movement for a new national language began. Some people wanted to base the national language on Danish with minor adjustments, which resulted in a written form called Riksmål. Others wanted the national language to be more distinctly Norwegian than Danish. This resulted in the creation of Landsmål, a more conservative written form which was created using elements of various rural Norwegian dialects. This was the precursor of Nynorsk. The Norwegian linguist Ivar Åsen created Landsmål. He examined the multitude of rural Norwegian dialects, especially those of Western Norway, looking for the elements that each dialect had preserved from Old Norwegian, and used those to create as traditional a form of Norwegian as possible while still being based on its modern dialects. Why did he focus on rural dialects? Because the urban dialects had been influenced by Danish, while rural dialects were more purely Norwegian. Riksmål still exists in its original form, but was mostly replaced with a slightly updated version called Bukmål. Landsmål was also replaced with a slightly updated form called Nynorsk. Bukmål and Nynorsk are more similar than Riksmål and Landsmål were. There were plans to merge them into a single standard called Samnorsk, but that never happened, so now there are two standards. Today, local governments can choose one of the two standards as their official form and 26%, representing around 12% of the population, have chosen Nynorsk, mostly rural communities in western Norway. Around 37% have made Bukmål official, and 37% are neutral, but in those areas, Bukmål tends to dominate. But everyone is also required to study the other standard as a secondary form. These standard languages are mainly written, and when it comes to speaking, Norwegians usually use their own dialect, even in formal situations. First, let's focus on Bukmål, and later we'll look at Nynorsk in comparison. Pronunciation and orthography. There are a tremendous number of different accents in Norway, and even when pronouncing standard Bukmål, they will likely pronounce it in their own accent. All ways of pronouncing Norwegian are officially considered correct, but let's focus on the pronunciation of Oslo, which sort of serves as an unofficial pronunciation standard. Consonants. The pronunciation of Norwegian consonant letters is often different from their English equivalent. G is usually pronounced G. Gung. But before EI, I, or Y, it's pronounced Y. 
Yait. And the letter J is also pronounced that way, not like J. Ja. R is usually an alveolar trill. Rar. This is one sound that varies greatly throughout the country. It can also be an alveolar tap. And in other accents, it's a uvular fricative, like ra. The letter K is pronounced before N, where it would be silent in English. Kniv. So unlike the English word knife, this actually makes sense. K is also associated with some other sounds. The combination KJ is pronounced kya, like in the English word hue. Shule. So is K before EI, I, or Y. Shino. But these days it seems that among young people, there's a growing tendency to pronounce these as sh. And I understand that this is the source of much controversy. The letter S also appears in some combinations to represent the sound sh, or approximations thereof. SJ. Sh. SKJ. Shut. And SK before EI, I, or Y. Sheep. Some consonant letters are silent in certain contexts. There's the letter G. For example, in words ending in IG or EG. Daily. And before J. Yes. And in some other words like Morn. D is sometimes silent. For example, after R, L, or N. Kvel. Or after a long vowel. Gu. H is silent before J and V. Yelp. Va. The letter T is silent in the definite form of neuter nouns, like Huse. and in the neuter pronoun de. And V is usually silent after L at the end of a word. Hull. Long consonants. Double consonant letters and clusters of consonants are pronounced as long consonants. They are held longer than a short consonant. For example, Hot. Now compare that to this word with a short consonant. Ha. This distinction occurs only in stressed syllables. There's also a distinction between short and long vowels. When a syllable contains a long consonant, it has a short vowel. Hot. And when a syllable contains a short consonant, it has a long vowel. Hot. They differ in length, but sometimes also in quality too. For example, O, short O. Stop. And long O. Book. I, first short. Sist. And long. Seed. This vowel is long because it's in an open syllable with no consonant at the end. E. Short E. Pen. And long E. Pen. There are some other vowels that are different from English vowels. The Norwegian Y sound is like the sound E but with rounded lips. E. Lis. U represents a sound between U and E. Hus. This letter is like the sound e, eh, but with rounded lips. Est. It's also worth pointing out two more vowels. This letter used to be common in Old English, but is rare in Modern English. It's been a part of Norwegian ever since it developed from Old Norse. It represents the sound a, eh, as in English, sat, but usually comes after r. Shad. It's sometimes pronounced like e. Eh. Veske. This letter represents the sound o. Oh similar to the vowel in the English word yawn, the way it's pronounced in many British accents. Sto. Most words in Norwegian have pitch accent. There's a pitch accent or a tone change on the stressed syllable. There are two different tone patterns. Tone one is low-high. It starts on a low tone, then moves to a higher tone in the stressed syllable. Tone two is high-low-high. It starts high but falls, then moves to a higher tone in the stressed syllable. Bønner. Bønner. As you can see from the two examples, pitch accent can indicate differences in meaning, but the tones are different depending on the dialect and are not crucial in making yourself understood. But ignoring pitch accent will result in a distinctly foreign accent. Grammar. The grammar of Norwegian is not terribly complex, and it's a Category 1 language according to the American Foreign Service Institute, which puts it in the category of languages that are supposedly the easiest for English speakers to learn. That doesn't mean that it's easy to learn, it just means that it's not as difficult as a lot of other languages. And that's specifically for English speakers. Let's look at a basic sentence. Jeg har ikke spist noe i dag. This sentence means, I haven't eaten anything today. Word for word it's, I have not eaten anything today. The word order in this sentence is exactly the same as in English. Norwegian's basic word order is SVO. And we can see that the verb is conjugated in the present perfect in the same way it is in English. 
with the auxiliary verb ha, which means have in the present tense, followed by the past participle of the verb spies. And also, notice that, just like in English, the negation word comes between the auxiliary verb and the past participle. But Norwegian verb conjugations are even simpler than they are in English. They are conjugated the same regardless of person or number. So for each tense, there is only one form. Spies. Is a regular verb, so it's a good example. In the present tense, yes, spiser. You can see that even though the pronouns are different, the verb forms are all the same. Spiser. Also, in the simple past, there's only one form. Yes, spiser. And there's one future tense form. Jag vill spisa. There are additional perfect and conditional conjugations that correspond with those in English, each of them having only one form. One minor pain in the backside is that Norwegian nouns have grammatical gender. Feminine, masculine, and neuter. For example, Ei kvinne, meaning a woman. En mann, meaning a man. Et fjell, meaning a mountain. For nouns that are not inherently masculine or feminine, like man or woman, the gender of each noun needs to be memorized. But notice the gender-specific indefinite article that comes before each noun. There are also gender-specific definite articles. Definite articles attach to the end of the noun. Kvinna, the woman. Mannen, the man. Fjellet, the mountain. These three genders are used in more conservative Norwegian and in Ni Norsk. Using three genders is required, but in Bukmal you can choose to treat masculine and feminine nouns as one gender, common gender. In the common gender, both feminine and masculine nouns use the masculine form. Remember that people who use Bukmal as their written language may still speak dialects that are different and may use all three genders in speech, even if they use two in writing. Let's stick with the common gender for now. Now let's check out the plural forms of the nouns. Kvinner, meaning women. Men, meaning men. Fjell, meaning mountains. Fjell, is the same as the singular form. Neuter nouns like this, that are only one syllable long, usually don't change in the plural. But you can tell that it's the plural if there's no article. Second, look at men. This is an irregular plural form with a change in the vowel stem. Kvinner, is a regular plural form. Plurals of all genders usually end in er like this. As for the definite plural forms, the ending is en, which functions as the definite article. Kvinne, the women. Menne, the men. Fjellene, the mountains. Let's make those nouns we just saw a little more interesting by adding adjectives. En nydelig kvinne. A beautiful woman. En kjekk mann. A handsome man. Et høyt fjell. A tall mountain or a high mountain. The adjective, to a certain extent, agrees with gender. A T is added to the end of most adjectives when the noun is neuter, like this T at the end of høyt. And when a noun is plural, an E is added to the end of the adjective in both the neuter and common genders. Nydelige kvinner. Beautiful women. Kjekke menn. Handsome men. Høye fjell. Tall mountains or high mountains. Also, when a noun phrase with an adjective is definite, there's an E at the end of the adjective, but something else also changes. There's a different definite article. Den nydelige kvinnen. The beautiful woman. Den kjekke mannen. The handsome man. Det høye fjellet. The tall mountain or the high mountain. And in the plural. De nydelige kvinnene. The beautiful women. De kjekke mennene. The handsome men. De høye fjellene. The tall mountains or the high mountains. Both genders, common and neuter, take the same article and the same endings on the adjective and the noun. Adjectives are also used to create adverbs by simply using the indefinite singular neuter form of the adjective, like høyt. They usually have a T ending, though there are some exceptions. Høyt. As an adverb means loudly, as in at a high volume. Now that we've examined some basic features of Norwegian, specifically bukmål, let's look at bukmål and nynorsk side by side and see how they're different. Let's start with a sentence we saw earlier in bokmål, meaning I haven't eaten anything today. Jeg har ikke spist noe i dag. Jeg har ikke etter noe i dag. These sentences don't seem so different, but there are a few differences. The first person singular subject pronoun has a slightly different form. Jeg. Jeg. Similarly, some of the other subject pronouns have different forms. Next, notice that the negation word is spelled differently. Ikke. Ikke. Now, notice that the verb for eat is different. In ni norsk, spist, is also used, but this option, ete, is more specific to ni norsk. And also notice that the word for something or anything is different. Noe, noko. 
Obviously, the words in Bukmol and Nynorsk are often related, but with slightly different forms. In spoken dialects, there are additional variations, some of which resemble Nynorsk more, and some of which resemble Bukmol more. Here's a sentence meaning she had a bad dream. Hun hadde en vond drøm. Hun hadde en vond drøm. Notice that the third person singular feminine pronoun is different. Also, the masculine indefinite article is slightly different. You can also see that the word for dream looks and sounds a little different. Drøm. Drøm. Nynorsk tends to preserve more old diphthongs from Old Norse than Bukmol. In this way, Nynorsk is more like Faroese and Icelandic than Bukmol or Danish or Swedish. Here's a sentence meaning they like to drive fast cars. De liker å kjøre raske biler. De liker å kjøre raske biler. First, the subject pronoun is slightly different. Next, notice that the infinitive forms of the verbs are slightly different. Kjøre. Kjøre. In bokmål, the infinitive of most verbs ends in an unstressed e. In nynorsk, the vowel can actually be either e or a, with a being the more conservative one. Now notice that the word for cars ends in er in bokmål and ar in nynorsk. Biler. Biler. Nynorsk has a tendency to use ar when bokmål uses er, though this is not always the case. Here's another sentence meaning crime is increasing due to high unemployment. Kriminaliteten øker på grund av høy arbeidsløshet. Kriminaliteten øker grunn av høy arbeidsløshet. Notice the different spelling of the verb meaning increase including the ER and AR endings that we just mentioned, as well as a diphthong appearing in the new Norsk word. Øker. Øker. Next, notice the difference in the way of saying due to. På grunna. Grunna. This way is more characteristically new Norsk, but in new Norsk you can also use the same expression as in bokmål. Kriminaliteten øker på grunn av høy arbeidsløse. In bokmål, there is also another form. Grunnet. But it's less commonly used. Notice the differences in the words meaning unemployment. Arbeidsløshet. Arbeidsløse. The word in bokmål contains the suffix het, which is used to turn adjectives into nouns, but nynorsk generally avoids this suffix because it reflects the influence of Danish. Nynorsk has a degree of linguistic purism, aiming to avoid loanwords from Danish and German. And one final pair of sentences, meaning falling in love is common among young people. Forelskelse er vanlig blant ungdommer. Forelsking er vanlig blant ungdommer. Notice that the first word in either sentence has a different ending. Nynorsk tends to avoid the bokmål ending, else, which forms a noun from a verb. Next we see a different spelling of the word meaning common. And again we see the er ending in bokmål, where it's ar in nynorsk. As you can see, Norwegian is a very interesting language, and if you speak a different Germanic language, then it probably seems very familiar to you in many ways. It's also a very accessible language, especially if you focus on bokmål, like most students do. But when you dig a little deeper, there are many, many dialects with countless variations for you to get used to, as well as nynorsk, the other form of standard Norwegian. So even though it's an accessible language, it's also a language with a lot of depth for people who choose to go deep. The question of the day. For native speakers of Norwegian, in any of its varieties, which form of Norwegian do you most commonly use in writing? And how about in speech? Can you easily communicate with people who use other varieties? And for other people, what do you think of the situation of having two standard versions of the same language in one country? Can you imagine such a situation with your own language? If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out LangFocus on the various social media platforms. And as always, I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially these ones right here on the screen, who are my top tier Patreon supporters. So many extra special thanks to them. And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day.